Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good evening, my dear sisters and brothers, and welcome to the Va, the Word of Promise program. Today is the Christmas Eve, and we are going to reflect the scriptures that the Holy Mother Church has given us. So the Lord says to us today, unless your faith is firm, you shall not be firm. Let's hope and pray that the Lord will give us the gift of faith at the end of this program. And to take us through the scriptures this evening, we do have Reverend Father Assisi Devasiri, OMI. He is the secretary to the provincial Colombo. Father, good evening to you evening. and welcome to the program. Thank you. Father, we know that you are not a stranger to this program. And uh, let's start, begin with asking you, for the theme today, Father. Yeah, as you said, uh, today we are reflecting on the readings of the morning mass of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, uh, naturally, it's a uh, celebration of joy. And uh, this is one of the biggest celebrations that we have in the church. Uh, maybe uh, equally important as the Easter. Mm -hmm. So we shall put, put it in this way that uh, let us celebrate the joy of the incarnation of the word. Let us celebrate the joy. This is, very, uh, this is a very joyful event. And let us celebrate that joy. Of course, keeping in our mind we are the, the, uh, the idea behind of this celebration is the fact that God was made flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you, Father. With that, should we actually go to the uh, first reading now? Uh, I was thinking, of course, uh, today, uh, if we go into the readings, my dear friends, we see uh, there are actually four masses for Christmas. Okay. There are four particular readings, set, sets of readings for Christmas. First one is to the Christmas Eve that is in the eve of Christmas, maybe for practical reasons. Mm -hmm. The other three has very historical values. So the mass that we are taking today, it is also called the King's Mass. That is, that was uh, celebrated from the beginning uh, in the morning, mm -hmm. that is 25th morning. We know there's a lot of discussions about the fixing of this date. We, we don't have time to go into that. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, there is also another uh, mass, uh, at the maybe after the uh, in the fifth century or so, uh, when they uh, uh, erect the Basil basilica of Saint Mary the Major, so they uh, they uh, brought a lot of uh, customs that were in Jerusalem into Rome. Uh, eventually, they also brought this uh, mass midnight mass that was. Uh, the celebrations they had in Jerusalem mm -hmm. to Rome and uh, we have the Midnight Mass that is also called the Angels Mass. Okay. Right? And then also there is another uh, saint in the Eastern Church venerated in the person of Saint Anastasia, mm. a martyr, whose feast falls on uh, 25th, okay. the Eastern liturgical calendar. So, in order to have some communion with them and to honor that saint, uh, the popes of that time, they have started uh, celebrating another mass at the dawn of Christmas. Okay. So, that is called the Shepherd's Mass. Okay. And uh, so, we have three masses, three separates reading. Out of all the three, uh, the, these names that I said, they were actually brought forth with the readings of the day. Okay. So, in the angels mass, we see that uh, the glory of the angels yes. being said that is at the midnight mass. Then the, we have the story of shepherds going to that, that is in the, the mass mm. at the dawn. And uh, this particular thing that we are going to discuss today, the mass that we are going to discuss today, that is the, the day proper mass okay. of the Christmas day, it is, uh, ha it has a lot of uh, uh, 
theology in it mm -hmm. in the in the readings mm -hmm. uh, centering basically around the incarnation of the word of god and the and the wisdom of it and uh, how uh, we sh as catholics we should understand this event we have lot of celebrations in and around we have lot of things happening superficially but underneath it's a huge mystery and the readings set us right at the center of that mystery mm. so today the readings are from uh, readings are directed towards that as i said we should have that incarnation of the word of god at the mm. uh, back of our mind throughout the readings mm. having that idea let us go into the first yes reading. so some of us will be joining the angels and some of us would be the in the king's mass am i right father oh yes and some are, uh, some of us will be in the with the shepherds yeah so yes. my dear sisters and brothers let's move into the readings of the day proper christmas day morning mass which is the king's mass uh, according to father uh, assisi who beautifully explained this to us father let's go to the first reading of uh, the morning mass first reading a reading from the prophet isaiah how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings announcing peace bearing good news announcing salvation and saying to zion your god is king hark your sentinels raise a cry together they shout for joy for they see directly before their eyes the lord restoring zion breaking out together in song o ruins of jerusalem for the lord comforts his people he redeems jerusalem the lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations all the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our god could it be that the text of this uh, uh, god leading israel out from the babylonian capti captivity to zion this read in the background could it be like that i'm asking you a question father right how does this apply to us on this sacred christmas day yeah now uh, as you rightly said the background is uh, just before they they finish their babylonian captivity and i think our viewers are uh, very much uh, 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 attuned to our program tabar yes and they know the book of isaiah is a, is a collection of uh, works of several authors and particularly we we understand that in uh, in three segments mm. we say the first isaiah the second and the third and the second isaiah from whom we have taken the text of the day uh, he was just before they complete right he foretells the end of the babylonian captivity now when we read this we should uh, have that in our mind uh, this is this is the final stages of their uh, exile so the uh, the need and the hope they had for deliverance salvation to have their own life free life free from slavery free from bondage free from other laws a place for them to worship their own god see uh, the thing that they really lost was their religious freedom okay. that that was the thing that they couldn't uh, fa fathom the why should uh, god won't allow us to do that that's why uh, we have that beautiful song by the rivers of so babylon yeah. how shall we sing the songs of god in this in this land mm. right so they were waiting to go back to their own place and to do that worship in their own way or the way that was used to by their ancestors mm. so that hope uh, now he is catering into that that need of the people and for tells it's uh, it's going to be over right so it's very 
uh, suiting for the for the day's theme. Therefore, mm -hmm. uh, the, actually the first reading sets a, a kind of a background to the day's theme. Mm -hmm. Like we all await, await the uh, dawn of our Savior or the arrival of the Savior, and we are also uh, in a in a way we are also enslaved to sin, darkness, and all that, and we are waiting till that light appears. So that is the background of this, and. Uh, this this particular text is very famous mm. out of the text of prophet isaiah coming from as i said from the deuter isaiah and uh, see the the words that he has used how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him feet of him who bring now we use our feet to walk mm. it's a movement right it's a movement uh, so when we move, we move from one place to another. There is also a progress, right? Uh, continuity, and uh, he's addressing that that uh, that activity, mm. prophetic activity, and uh, he's telling it's a beautiful thing that a that a that a he he this person brings a very glad tiding to a. Uh, to the people of Israel and it is a beautiful image to see that's the idea behind it and then uh, he also says uh, uh, there's a side uh, connection to this watchman this uh, a person who is looking at the uh, at the road uh, until the king arrives mm -hmm. after the uh, battle so, which kind of flag he bears, whether the, he has won or whether he has lost. So, the, he's the, the watchman is the person who sees that uh, from the distance. So, he, he uh, compares these this, uh, images to see now we all are awaiting this moment and it's a beautiful image to see. Uh, that is the idea behind that. Then there is also uh, an expression, uh, the Lord uh, comforts his people and the Lord has bared his holy arm. Mm. I, I thought uh, we should understand, this is a beautiful one, uh, this uh, bearing one's holy arm, uh, God's holy arm, bearing one's arm actually, it's a Hebrew idiom it seems. Mm -hmm. Hebrew idiom, we uh, bearing is to make one's hand free, mm. right? We make uh, the the uh, the warriors make their hands free mm. uh, to fight. That's the idea, and uh, it's very it's very difficult to translate in that way. For example, it's like. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, when we go for these, these youngsters, when they go for fi fight, mm. they kind of uh, roll up the sleeves, yes. no? Yes. Right? So, that type of expression, mm, okay. that God is doing that, okay. rolling up his sleeves to fight. fight. Okay. That type of uh, imagery. Mm. To say, because uh, uh, the scriptures and the authors of those scriptures, they use... Uh, some of the things that uh, they were very common in their in their time and people understood them very well mm -hmm. and this is one of those uh, idioms uh, very familiar to the people and very close to their heart to say now god is god is one among us mm -hmm. he's gonna be right don't worry he will come back and fight with this this uh, great empire mm -hmm. babylonian empire so, and he finally says, and uh, this happens, he gets ready, not only before the people of Israel, he, he do this, he does this in the eyes of all the nations. Nations, yeah. The, this tidings, this good news, not only to the people of Israel, this mighty work will happen in the, in, the, in the lives of the people of Israel, but it will be seen, witnessed by the whole world. The whole nation will see the power of God. That is where he is directing us 
the due tries are. And I think, as I said, uh, for a day like this, uh, that's, uh, uh, that sets the background to the feast. Uh, so now God is ready. The time has come. Uh, you have been uh, in a lot of sorrow, right, recently. Now it's a time for rejoicing. And therefore, this is kind of a doxology, uh, a praiser in a way. Uh, the time is ready. Let's move on. Mm. Thank you, Father. Yes, my dear sisters and brothers, the time is ready and we need to be vigilant to see the mighty works of the Lord, isn't it, Father? Yes. Yes. So let's be vigilant and uh, we'll go read the uh, responsorial psalm for the day. Yeah. When we read, I uh, invite uh, our viewers also, while reading the text, uh, see this particular text is directly uh, uh, connected with the first reading, we will see the same imagery mm. in, the, in the psalm as well. Yes. We'll, we shall read now. Yeah. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord all your lands. Break into song. Sing praise. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The psalmist is praising God for God's marvelous deeds and victory, which means the God of Israel has appeared in some great deeds. Is the psalmist hinting at the birth of Messiah, Father, uh, the coming of our Lord? Please explain. Uh, you beautifully said it's directly yeah. connected to the first reading, first reading. And when we went through the text, like you invited us to see the connection, we all can see that, Father. If you can further explain to us, please. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, this also we have discussed in this, in this, pro in this same program earlier, uh, the concept of Messiah, Messianic ship, was, uh, uh, it was something that was developed mm. in the history of Israel. Mm. So uh, the beauty of the revelation of God is that now we are looking backwards. We see oh, everything in retrospection. Then we understand the text, right, having the complete picture with us because now God is revealed. Mm. Jesus Christ was here with us, among us. Now we see the complete picture, but at the time of their writing, we, we can't say exactly whether, whether it was aimed at real Messiah, Messiah. as such. Yeah. But then, definitely when we read this now, right, as inspired text, it has a lot, uh, lot of connections to the, to the day's re uh, themes. Because, uh, first of all, uh, he's, he begins with the people of Israel and it go, goes on to the whole creation, right? It, it's, there is a lot of progression happening in, the, in, the, in these lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I think there are a few words that we should mark today. Yes. First of all, this new song, yeah. right? Sing to the Lord a new song. Why a new song? Because it's, it's a new beginning. Okay. It's a new beginning and therefore it should be a new song. So there is a, a clearly demarcated epoch brought forth by the birth of Christ and there is, a, this, is this is addressing to that uh, era of God. We don't know whether it was addressed as I said originally to that, that birth but then when we see that today, it's definitely addressing that it is a new song a new beginning, that is the idea. And then, as I said, 
why should we have a new song? Because the God has won mm. his victory. Mm. He's victorious. And uh, how he has, has he done it? Uh, using his right hand right. and his holy arm. Yeah. We, we see that imagery where that we discuss yes. coming up here. Yeah. Because uh, right hand is a, is a image that they use to say uh, it's uh, not actually the left and right of it, but uh, the Power strongest, stronger. One, the powerful one, the used, most commonly used hand. Mm. That's the idea. Mm. So, right hand and his holy arm. And then, uh, what has he brought forth? The salvation for mm. people. Now, uh, the psalmist here has a direct connection to the first reading that we had, the Isaiah's, because it's uh, the, in, the, uh, in the book of Isaiah that we find this uh, theme of salvation taking its shape, right, in the prophetic literature. And, uh, and salvation and righteousness, mm. those are the two things, th two themes that comes. Uh, and revealed his justice, right? Yeah. So righteousness and salvation, these are the things uh, for, from uh, establishment of those uh, are the things that due to which we should praise the Lord mm -hmm. and should sing a new song. And there is something here I think we should not. It is not only that God has been victorious. It is not only that he has won the battle, mm -hmm. that he has fight on behalf of his people. It is also his salvation he has made known to the made people. Not, yeah. Right? There is, uh, there is that part that we should mark today. Mm. Because today we celebrate this feast. Uh, it's like uh, we, don't, we don't only celebrate the action of it. We also celebrate the proclamation of it. Yeah. So his salvation, he saved the people, but he made us known that salvation. Right. So there is two different aspects. Mm. Uh, today it's about more about I I would say making known no. of the salvation yes. Yes. because it is Christmas mm. and his salvific act happens in the Easter, mm. but today is the day that it was made known to the people. So that's the idea behind the responsorial sound. Thank you, Father. Actually, like you said, there wouldn't have been an Easter uh, if Christmas didn't happen yeah. <laughs> in, in the, that yeah, vice manner. Versa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, vice versa. But today, as we are celebrating the Christmas, birth, of, yes, yeah, birth of Christ. Right. Thank you so much, Father. You are actually like edifying us. My dear sisters and brothers, isn't it wonderful to follow this program? There are hidden treasures uh, unearth for us to know as lay people. We actually need to thank and praise God for this uh, uh, rich uh, heritage that we have. Thank you so much, Father. Father, should we go to the second reading today? Yes, yes. Unlike other days, I, I would say, uh, I have said this several times, the second reading was uh, originally brought to the liturgy for further studies, mm. for those who are doing studies to have another passage, sometimes related to the main theme, uh, sometimes not. No. But today, all knit together, because today is the day of Christmas, they have particularly taken the, maybe the mostly, uh, we have every word in, in scripture is very, uh, very, uh, it's definitely inspired by God. But then there are some texts, they are, they are full of uh, meaning, full of theology, mm. right? It's very, uh, without them, we can't understand the, the other passages sometimes. And uh, today the gospel and the letter to the Hebrews, both from the New Testament, both of them coming maybe from uh, uh, various traditions, but then rightly talks about the incarnation of the word. Yes, I shall read the second reading, Father. Yes. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in the past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, 
he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through him he created the universe, who is the reflection of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels. As the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs, for to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Father, the second reading scripture text, like you said, beautifully portraits the Son of God. The letter to the Hebrews certainly brings clarity regarding the Son of God, the Messiah. Please explain to us through this text the way to experience, how we could experience the Messiah, the Savior of God in the present times in our day, in our day-to-day -day challenges, Father. Yeah. So, uh, today not only the text, but also I think the backgrounds of the text, all the text, are connected, mm -hmm. right? Now, uh, we got a, read, a passage from Deuteronomy, as I said, that was a discouraged lot, right? Discouraged lot, awaiting salvation. Yeah. And uh, then uh, we will come to the Gospel of John. Uh, then I said uh, the psalm, psalm is also is referring to the same, same, same situation. And here, uh, letter to the Hebrews, even after the, uh, the birth of Christ, okay, in the church, when persecution happened, right, uh, people got discouraged. Some of the churches we have in the book of Revelation, mm. few churches, uh, the author, blagas left and right, no, yeah. right. You you shouldn't be doing that in the in the book of Revelation, and uh, uh, this is this is a letter. Of course, it is. Uh, it starts like a essay continues as a sermon and ends like a letter. Mm. It's a beautiful piece of literature. And uh, this was addressed to a kind of discouraged community right. to make them understand the reality of Christianity, mm. so to say, the basics of it. And why should we regard Christ as our savior and uh, having allusions to Hebrew traditions, still keeping on to the wisdom of Greek, uh, Greek minds uh, together. Mm -hmm. So the background is once again a discouraged lot. Mm -hmm. And to that, uh, he's taking a beginning or an introduction to his sermon, to his letter, what, what, what was it? So, and he begins with the word God. Yeah. Right, because this uh, is coming from God to this community, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, the protagonist is God, so to say. And uh, uh, we shall go into the reading, and uh, uh, that's a beautiful one. We can't leave out anything of yeah. the of the text. I would say. Uh, in times part, God spoke in partial and various ways, right, to our ancestors. So, uh, there have been the, the revelation of God had always been uh, given to us through our ancestors, and those ancestors used lot of techniques in uh, in giving that uh, parables. There had been historical narratives and then uh, prophets who use a lot of symbolism, maybe sometimes throughout uh, like uh, their whole life, for example, the prophet, the, in the case of Prophet Hosea, their life was 
a profiting gesture. Exactly. Right? And uh, the Psalms, the Proverbs and the Scriptures and all that. So, lot of ways to illustrate the love of God and the promise that God had given to his people. So, he is addressing to a crowd who knew their scripture. Mm -hmm. When he says, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors, he is kind of summing up the whole Old Testament. So, it is bringing everything together. Yeah. And then he says, and now in these last days, so he says, He's, he's also bringing that notion of there, now there is another age, mm -hmm. right, beginning, another age created. So demarcation of time, we are moving on to a new age. Now in this last days of the, right, mm -hmm. uh, he has spoken to us through the sun. And uh, the first passages of the letter to the Hebrews is about uh, establishing uh, the position of Christ. Who is Christ? Mm. And uh, we see uh, he wants to say he's on on one uh, on the one hand he's 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 like a high priest, mm. right? But then more than that he's yes. also the Son of God, God. and uh, he is a kingly priest. priest. We have this uh, beautiful. Uh, uh, citations, mm. for example, now uh, he talks about uh, when he had accomplished purification, purification from sins, yes. which is a priestly act. Okay. It is because it is it is done by priests. We know mm. purification from sins. It is uh, it is from the Jewish uh, customs, and he took his seat at the right right hand of the majesty and that is a kingly King act. act. So it's a royal privilege to sit at the uh, right hand of the uh, of uh, of the king. king. Right? So it's a royal privilege. So he, this author brings both together mm. and not only that he makes him even superior to the angels. Yes. Right? So keeping at the position where Christ should be kept in our faith, right? He is far superior to every other person who has come to this world uh, giving the message or even not, right? Even the angels. And uh, then finally, he brings uh, three lines from the scripture, mm. maybe particularly the first and the second. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Now, this is coming from a royal psalm, psalm number 2 verse 7. And uh, uh, that psalm, once we, we actually took that psalm mm. on, a, on, a, uh, on a day of uh, Sunday's readings, uh, it was uh, said at the enthronement, it seems. Uh, royal psalms sure. were sung at the enthronement to say now uh, God is our king but the king is the son of God mm. uh, because king represents the authority of God, God on earth and you are my son mm. this day I have begotten thee from today onwards you are uh, the king becomes uh, the child of God mm. so it is coming from that psalm mm. and he cites here and it is to only to Jesus, it's exactly uh, directed. Uh, for to which of the angels did God, because for not any angel had that uh, uh, the chance to be addressed like this, but Jesus had, had. that at the, at the baptism. So, and once again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. That is coming from the second book of Samuel. Uh, we know the story. It's uh, it's about uh, uh, David asking uh, to build the temple, and he, uh, God says uh, through the through prophet, prophet Nathan uh, to David, yeah. "No, you don't need to build that temple. I will. I will. Uh, I will." Uh, 
choose another son of yours to do that and he will be a son to me and all that mm. it's, uh, referring to Solomon and uh, these are the two contexts there from which the, these two citations were taken okay. and he quotes that and says this is the place that uh, God has given to Jesus and that is uh, it is to uh, him that we should have our faith bound so that is the idea so all things come put together we have a background created to the incarnation of the word that we're going to listen at the gospel. Yeah. Father, we, when we started, we also asked God to uh, strengthen us with the gift of faith. Yes. 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 So, my dear sisters and brothers, our hope will come to true, come to pass when we go through the uh, gospel for today. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him. And without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he, came, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. And we saw His glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to Him and cried out, saying, This was He of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because He existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. Jesus Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Father, this is a text from the scripture. Please explain to us the following words, Father. Uh, this gospel which you just read is, uh, I don't know if we can uh, talk about it, we can go for three, four hours. Yeah. Uh, but we have very little time now. <laughs> Father, in a very um, uh, brief way, if you can actually explain to us word, flesh, light, darkness, power to become children born by God's choice yeah yeah we shall we shall certainly should do justice to this text yeah. anyway uh, and uh, we will we shall begin with the first few words yeah right it is it starts with uh, now uh, the whole uh, passage is like a poem and uh, the protagonist of this poem is word. Okay. And uh, it's not just word, it's the word. The word. Personified word. So incarnated word. So in, uh, in Jonah in literature, this particular 
concept of word, the personified word, uh, through that uh, through that word, uh, he brings whatever he could gather from his time, whatever he could gather from his uh, time of his uh, of his time, and he brings everything together to make this this particular word the word very special mm. and uh, we have uh, for example uh, the he, the word they have used in greek uh, as we know is uh, logos. logos and uh, i felt like when we I, when i was uh, getting ready for this program it is like the feast day of this program yes because uh, the Hebrew word that we have for Logos is the bar. Okay. Right? And uh, there is another word, uh, uh, maybe the concept of it, uh, coming from the wisdom literature, that is the wisdom. Right? Uh, so we should have an idea of all these concepts to understand this particular, the Logos, mm. the word. And uh, uh, so we know logos is uh, is to it's a it's a piece of word logos in Greek, and uh, to talk uh, it can be an utterance and mm. a speech. So that is the idea. But the but in the Hellenism, logos has a, a beautiful meaning or deep meaning to say the rationale behind the universe, mm. the, the soul, soul of the universe. So it is coming from Greek uh, literature and Greek philosophy. That is the, uh, the force behind the creation of universe according to their mind. So it is logos that they understood. And then in the wisdom tradition, uh, we know Wisdom tradition was created uh, amidst Hellenism and Jewish, okay. right? Judaism. Hmm. So, in in Judaism, they had they had davar, hmm. which is also word, but it's not just word. Hmm. It is a creative word, and it had also the connotation of an event. Okay. Because when God said something, something happens. Happened. It happened. Let there be light, there was light. So it, it is not just a word, it is an event, a total event, a, crea a creative one. So they had that. And out of that, uh, they also had the Torah mm. coming from the word of God. Thus says the Lord, Adonai. So, so they had... Uh, uh, the Torah, but Greeks had the uh, rationale, mm. reason, rational power, which uh, they kept on saying. No, so uh, the wisdom literature wanted to bring these two together, yeah. and uh, they found okay, the this soul of the universe is the wisdom of God. And we see in the wisdom literature, probably in, uh, in, the, in the book of Proverbs, we find uh, 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 having uh, uh, in connection to the creation, we have I force with God in the creation, mm -hmm. right? I is this uh, lady wisdom, okay. right? Okay. It was with God, uh, we can have that uh, reading. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the first face of the deep, when he made firm the skies, so forth, I was there. Right? It is coming from uh, Wisdom chapter 7. So, why it is this? Because they understood the wisdom of God was from the, from the beginning with God. And wisdom was God. Mm. So, that is coming from Wisdom tradition. Okay. And uh, from Greek tradition, we had uh, Logos as the soul of the universe. And from the Jewish tradition, we had this mm -hmm. Dabwar. In the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, we have everything 
personified in the word mm. that is pers pers personified in the person of Jesus Christ actually mm. it is here the word is that mm. so this is what John needs to explain at the very beginning he doesn't have a, a nativity story as such this is the way he says and uh, his nativity story is only one line actually right he he says uh, at the final the last lines no mm. the word became flesh mm. and made mm. his dwelling among us yeah. that is his nativity yeah. right and we saw his glory and so forth so it is is the way he explains the whole story god the word that word that wisdom that uh, creation creative power that rationale behind the universe all that became blood and flesh mm. became a human person, person and dwelt among us okay. and he and he also has a, a, a connection to the beginning that's how he starts no in the beginning where do we find that uh, in the bible in the beginning genesis in genesis, genesis right in genesis that was the first three words in the beginning and ak so he he has that uh, connot uh, allusion to that that uh, that text from genesis and once again implying there is a new beginning here yeah. this is a new world order new beginning and a new creation mm? and uh, we also find in this in this particular text uh, i we have explained this a chiastic pattern there is a pattern of the of this poem mm -hmm. of this song uh, it starts with uh, these lines in the beginning was word and the word was toward we know that no and it ends with also a similar thing no one has ever seen god god the only one so beginning and the end mm. uh, has similar uh, references yes. to god and then uh, the beginning of the world and to moses when we go in that line at the center we find the most important uh, element mm. or the sentence that is what we call a chiastic pattern mm -hmm. we have explained this in mm -hmm. in uh, one of the programs so uh, this this was used by the scripture authors to have uh, have in the center what they really wanted to tell mm -hmm. so what they really wanted to tell is the result of this whole act of god that is to all who received him he gave power to become children, children of god that is where he is bringing everything right it is to that that point he wants to establish his his, his kind of uh, syllogism mm. and uh, i think uh, in christmas we have uh, uh, our hearts and minds set towards the beauty of the that story right it had happened in the history but underneath that story because we know that's a story right uh, there are uh, there are historical events uh, cited or connected to that but it was throughout the history it was uh, decorated so to say but uh, underneath that all those stories what we have is this beautiful message the message of the incarnated word of god and uh, if we lose sight of that we lose the meaning of christmas that is the gospel thank you so much father see uh, how beautifully you explained all these <laughs> words i put in line the word flesh light darkness I, power we, we, to we didn't go to light we didn't go to light we'll we'll take some one minute or so we'll we, we, otherwise it's not uh, just by the by text. our viewers no okay, yeah. right and uh, so uh, 
John uses a uh, lot of uh, these opposite forces mm. to make the make the drastic difference okay. between the world order, mm. right? So one is this uh, light and darkness. darkness. Uh, so da light in opposed to the darkness, darkness. that that the pe world has experienced, and uh, it is uh, maybe in the other other days of uh, uh, maybe. Uh, in the day of uh, epiphany, we can take that discussion elaborately, light and darkness. Uh, but he uses this, uh, the, the, the word, world that we know of, the world of the disciples and the world, the other world and light and darkness, power and uh, powerlessness. He uses all that to make that difference mm -hmm. basically the uh, the drastic difference between good and evil that is the idea yeah. thank you so much father uh, well i actually don't have words to thank you father we i'm i'm personally so edified today father thank you so much my dear sisters and brothers uh, i'm sure you'll agree with me this was so wonderful how father took us through the scripture uh, of the christmas King's Mass, the morning Mass, scriptures which has been given to us by the Holy Mother Church. Remember the Hebrew word, the Va, and that is where we are, the word of promise. And Father said, it's a new world order with Christ coming into our lives. So this Christmas, we are in the Christmas Eve, Father? Yeah, this Christmas. Let's allow the Lord to be born in our hearts. I'm sure you will agree with me. And let us celebrate the joy of the incarnation of the word. We, if Jesus is not in this celebration, we are celebrating an empty uh, nothing. <laughs> I would put it that way. So like we know, all know, uh, Christmas time is the most joyful time, I would say, uh, in, in the entire year. And the entire world celebrates it, Father. I'm sure you will agree with me, sisters and brothers. Father, yeah. you will agree with me. But we will lose everything if we don't have Jesus in the center, the Word incarnate. So with this, we have come to the end of the program. And thank you so much for joining us. Father, I honestly don't have any words to thank you other than just saying thank you for actually taking us beautifully through the scriptures today. We are all edified. Thank you so much, Father. May God bless, God bless you. My dear sisters and brothers, thank you so much for joining us this Christmas Eve, going through the scriptures. And please do join us again next week. Merry Christmas to you and may God bless you.